In this video, we're going to take a look at constructing new logical equivalences using some of the logical equivalents we just went over in our last video. So what I'd like to do before we do this new equivalence is we're going to actually show this is true using all of those equivalences we talked about in the previous video. But before we do that, I just want to show you in a truth table that it is true as well. So you can see that these are just two different strategies. So the first thing I did is I went ahead and created the truth table and did the easy parts. I made my P and Q column, and that's always that first part. And then I filled in some of the next couple of columns just because they were easy. They're just negations. So we just took whatever was in P and negated it, whatever was in Q and negated it. And then I made a column for not P and Q, for P or not P and Q, and then the negation. So I had three columns for that left-hand side, but this is the one I'm going to be looking at when I get to the end. And then for the right-hand side, let's use a different color there, we've just got not P and not Q. So let's go ahead and do some of the work. Here I have not P and Q. So I'm looking at these two items. And remember, this is an and, which means in order for me to put a true in the column, they both must be true. So that's a false because I've just got one true. That's a false. That's a true because they're both true, but that's a false because I've got one true, one false. Now I'm going to take that new column I just created and I'm going to say P or that new column I just created. So I'm looking at P and the new column, and one of them has to be true for me to put a true. So in this row, I have a true, so I get a true. And in this row, I have a true, so I get a true. And in this row, I have a true, so I get a true. But in this row, I've got two falses, so I get a false. Then my next column is just the negation of that, so that's false, false, false true. So that's what I'm hoping my blue column will match up to. So how do I find the values in the blue column? Well, I'm looking at not P and not Q. So I'm looking at these two and they both have to be true for me to put a true. That gives me a false. That gives me a false. That gives me a false. Two trues give me a true. So as we can see, those two compound propositions are equivalent, which we've shown with the truth table. Now what I want to do is show you another way to prove that. Now I want to take a look at the exact same example, and I want to show you how we can construct this new logical equivalence using things that we already know. So this is going to look kind of like a two column proof if you've ever looked at two column proofs before. But notice what I'm doing is I'm just proving exactly what I showed with the truth table previously. And when we do this, we start with whatever is on the left side. So notice I've taken whatever's on the left side and written it. And then on the right side, my goal is to have some statement that I can use this statement to turn it into based on some law or rule that we know. And I'm going to keep repeating that process until I end up where I'm trying to end up. So this is not something you're probably going to be good at right away. You're going to have to do some practice. But let me kind of walk you through this example the way that I went through it. So here I have the negation on the outside of obviously some parentheses. And essentially what I'm doing is using De Morgan's second law, which says if I have the negation of this or statement, then it's going to negate the two items, the two propositions, and change it to an and statement. So that's what I did first. And again, why did I do that? Because I don't like this negative hanging out there on the outside. Now I'm going to continue and I've got a negation on the outside of an and statement. And so I'm going to use the first De Morgan's law that says if you have the negation on the outside, it's going to distribute to both and turn it into an or statement. So that's all I did for my second step. 
Notice what I'm doing is I'm writing the result and then writing the reason why. Writing the result and then writing the reason why. Now I'm looking at the fact that I have a not not p, so I'm just changing it to a p by the double negation law. And then I'm looking at, I've got not p and, and then I've got a compound proposition. And so I'm going to distribute that not p by the second distributive law. So I'm taking not p and p or not p and not q. Now I'm replacing not p and p with false because we know by the second negation law that if we have not p and p that it must be false. It is a contradiction. Now I have to switch the order which is what I did here by the commutative law for disjunction. And I'm okay if you just write the commutative law. Um, it says commutative law for disjunction because obviously we're dealing with an or, which is a disjunction. And the reason that I did that is because the identity law is written in this format with the false coming second. And so we have to put it in that format to use the identity law. The identity law says if you have something or false, it's whatever that something was. And so notice now I've ended up here at not P and not Q, which is where I wanted to end up. So we showed this with a truth table and showed that it was in fact logically equivalent. But now this is just a little bit, I guess, more secure way to do it because we're using um, all of our um, known identities or known laws that we can use with logical equivalences. In this example, we are trying to show that if P and Q, then P or Q is a tautology. And again, we're going to use the same method that we just used, but what we're doing is essentially we're saying show that all of this is equivalent to true, because remember that's what a tautology says, is that it's always true. So typically it's going to give us something on this side, but because it said tautology, that means whatever steps I go through, when I get to the end, I just want it to say is equivalent to true. So let's see if we can start working our way through this. The first step I'm going to take is a law that doesn't have a name. So we have some laws that talk about if then statements and different ways that we can rewrite them. And one of the ways to rewrite them is that if P then Q is equivalent to not p or q. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that law to say not p and q or q, which is p or q. Because remember, p and q here are propositional compound propositions. So that's all I've done is, oops, I've applied that rule. So step one, done. Then I'm gonna say, okay, well that is the same or equivalent to not P or not Q. And then notice the stuff on the right side, I'm not changing. Now, how am I able to do that? Well, all I did was distribute that negation. Remember when we're distributing negation, we're dealing with De Morgan's laws and that is the first De Morgan law. Now I'm going to say, well, I've got a not P and a not Q and a P and a Q. So I'm going to do some rearranging. Now I could, the, the rule is you should only do one thing per step. But because it's all kind of the same thing, I'm just going to do some moving around and regrouping. So I'm going to rename this. Whoops, let's keep the same colors here. I'm going to call this P or not P or Q or not Q. And again, I did quite a few things here it's sort of simple things. So it's things that are easy to follow. So again, I had a P and a not P, a Q and a not Q, and notice these were all ors. So what did I do? I used the commutative 
by changing the order and associative laws for disjunction. So disjunction because I've got all of the ors and that's commutative and associative because I switched the order and I grouped them differently. Okay, so now I'm going to say that I've got P or not P and a P or not P is true. And I'm keeping this the same. Whoops, I keep switching my colors. Darn it, hold on a minute. Let's do that again. So P or not P is true or Q or not Q is true. And I'm doing those both on the same step because it's the exact same law. And that law is the negation law. Or I believe that's actually the second negation law. Now I'm not so worried about naming the first or the second, um, except for the De Morgan law, you really should say if it's the first or the second. But if you just said the negation law on that one, I would be just fine with that. So now I have true or true by the second negation law. And if I have true or true, then I can say that that is in fact congruent to true. What rule can I say is saying that it is congruent to, to, to true and that is the domination law. Because if you'll recall, the domination law says P or true is congruent or equivalent to P. And of course, if this is true or true, it's congruent or equivalent to true. So that is how I would prove that again by developing a series of logical equivalences. Here's one for you to try on your own. So if you would press pause, try this question, and when you're ready, press play to see how you did. As always, I'm going to start by writing whatever is on the left side. So I have not, not P or Q. And then I'm going to perform whatever my first step is, keeping in mind that this is my goal. So the first thing I see is I have a negation on the outside of a compound proposition. And that to me just screams De Morgan's law. De Morgan says if you've got this negation, then you can distribute the negation and it's going to change, in this case, from an or to an and, or if it was an and, it would change to an or. So I've distributed the negation and changed it from or to and, and that's by the first De Morgan law. Now I see that I've got a not not, I've got a double negation here. And so for my double negation, I'm going to call that P and not Q. And how did I do that? That's by the double negation law. Oops, forgot my E, double negation law. Now I can see I'm really close to what I'm trying to get to. All I have to do is switch the order to not Q and P, and that's exactly what I wanted. How did I just switch the order? It's the commutative law. And again, I don't care if you write for disjunction and conjunction, whichever one you happen to be using at that time, as long as you write the commutative law, I know what you're talking about. So make sure that um, you're just writing whichever law. And so therefore I have just shown that not, not P or Q is logically equivalent to not Q and P. Up next, we're going to take a look at some predicate logic, which is what happens when propositions are just not enough.